This time we have an extraordinarily generous donation from Chris Scott, an Amiga 2000, and some additional Zorro 2 cards. In fact, this appears to be an accelerator and SCSI. So let's take this machine apart. Much of what's inside is not actually connected. The MFM hard drive here isn't connected to the controller. This appears to be an original A2090 SCSI and MFM controller. And indeed it is. In fact, it's a 2090A, as it contains the three ROMs required for auto boot. Inside it's disgustingly dirty. We also have a random five and a quarter drive. The only reason for that to be in here is if it at some point had a bridge card in it. Removing the power supply, we're down to the bare motherboard. It suffered a little bit of battery damage. This Zorro slot has seen some better days. So let's take that CPU out. And clean up any damage and any battery acid that might still exist. Pulling the power supply apart just to make sure there's nothing in here that's leaking, it all looks reasonable. So for now, I'm not planning on doing anything other than testing that the voltage outputs are as expected. Yep, we've got 11 volts minus 11 volts, those are the 12 volt lines, minus 5 volts, the 2.5 fluctuating is the tick signal, and everything else is 5 volts. Everything looks good. So, the moment has come to power this board on and see if it works for the first time. We're connected to just the composite video out. And powering this up, we get a familiar Amiga Kickstart 1.3 screen, which looks like it's in colour, but it's not, I assure you, it's actually black and white. Booting from floppy drive is also working, and that gets us into Amiga Test Kit. The keyboard that was provided is the dirtiest keyboard I have ever seen, but it's also an incredibly working keyboard. The accelerator card is actually a 68030 running at 40 megahertz and the hard drive on it appears to want Kickstart 2, so let's put a Kickstart 2 ROM in. And it boots up to a desktop. Now those two hard drives I am going to be imaging in a future video. Well, let's get this board clean. We've already got rid of some of the green on the sockets, but the whole thing needs a bath, so we're going to give it one. Everything's cleaned up quite nicely. We've removed the Zorro slot that was damaged. And it's important that we replace this damaged socket with something fitting. A gold-plated 
100 pin Zorro 2. I love gold! I'm planning on putting something quite special in this slot, so we're making sure we're having the best contacts possible. To make sure the new Zorro slot works, we'll use the provided memory card, and we can see that shows up. The video out was damaged. The 5 volt supply and the 12 volt supply to the port were both blown. One because of a trace, the other because of the fuse. Fixing that gets us into colour. Well, that A2090A card's going to go to a new home once I've imaged the hard drive. See if you recognise this logo. And there are some future modifications and endeavours I want to do with this A2000. One, getting a CD-ROM drive working. Upgrading it to a full ECS chipset, including a full 2 meg of chip RAM which resulted in some things going wrong watch out for future videos where we'll dig in further and get this A2000 back together thanks for watching and why not check this video out next <laughs>